It's always kind of fun to back those carbs into a corner a little bit, poke them and just irritate them and kind of make fun of them a little bit. But look, at carbs aren't bad, but there is some pretty clear evidence that when you go a little overboard, which we are all probably familiar with, it could have a powerful effect on estrogen. Now, I know some people on the internet are going to say, hey, no, estrogen is a completely different category, but hmm, if you look at the evidence, it's pretty clear. So let's go ahead and dive in. Hey, I do wanna make sure after this video, you check out Thrive Market. They are an online membership-based grocery store, and they are super convenient when it comes down to just getting the foods that you want in that better for you category. So whether you are looking at keto, fasting, paleo, gluten-free, you can get your groceries delivered to your doorstep. And a lot of times it's more economical than going to the grocery store. So my pantry is more or less all Thrive Market stuff now. It's like they just deliver to my doorstep. So I don't go to the grocery store for my pantry goods. I go to the grocery store for my meat, for my dairy, for things like that. I allow Thrive to do the rest. So there's a link down below for you to check them out. And if you're a subscriber to my channel or a viewer of my videos, there's a special link that allows you to get a free gift when you try out Thrive Market with that link. So check them out after this video. And a big thank you to them for their continued support. So for this to make sense, it involves a little bit of a transport explanation on how glucose gets into our muscle. But there's another piece we also have to look at. Glucose can do a couple of different things. It triggers an insulin response, right? Well, that insulin response can allow glucose to go into the muscle where we want it, or it can allow glucose to go into the fat where we don't want it. And there are some studies that demonstrate that it varies widely between people, right? And generally people that are more overweight or more insulin resistant, they're gonna take up that glucose into the fat. But the reason that that works that way is there's something called a GLUT4 transporter. And this GLUT4 transporter takes glucose out of the bloodstream and brings it into the muscle cell. What happens is this GLUT4 lives on the inside of a cell and then it travels to the outside, to the membrane of a cell. And when it's on the membrane of the cell, it captures like almost like a net the glucose that's flying by. And then it pulls it into the cell and pulls it into the muscle. So we store carbs as glycogen instead of fat. Well, this GLUT4 can become suppressed. It can become suppressed a lot of ways. But estrogen is one of the worst ways that it can become suppressed. You see, here's how it looks. If you have testosterone flowing around through your body, okay, male, female, either way, but specifically we can talk about males so it's just an easier equation to look at in that particular case because there's more testosterone. But fat on the body houses a specific enzyme that's called aromatase. You may have heard of it before, but what aromatase does is it takes testosterone that's in the bloodstream and it converts it into estrogen. So obviously this is a problem. But additionally, there's another thing that occurs, and this is where the whole carbohydrate thing comes into play. Okay, testosterone, one of its functions is to suppress what is called estrogen receptor beta, or ERB. So normally testosterone says, hey, we need less receptors for estrogen. Testosterone's the boss here. So go ahead and reduce that, that estrogen. Okay, so the estrogen receptors tend to go away if testosterone levels are skewed in the right direction. Well, obviously, if we have more testosterone getting converted into estrogen because there's more fat on the body, well, then you can see what would happen here. Then we have less testosterone, more estrogen. So that's more estrogen as is, but also less testosterone being able to actually suppress this receptor. Well, that's not the end of the story. Once we have overactive estrogen receptors, we run into a serious problem. Overactive estrogen receptors suppress GLUT4 transport. They directly affect how GLUT4 grabs glucose in. So once the estrogen receptors are more dominant, then suddenly GLUT4 doesn't like to travel to the surface of the cell anymore. It's like it becomes lazy. And when it doesn't travel to the surface of the cell, guess what? We're not taking glucose into the muscle. We start becoming, you guessed it, insulin resistant. Which means that if we have insulin resistant muscles, the glucose needs to go somewhere. It's either gonna stay elevated or it's going to go into the fat tissue. Well, then what happens? Well, yeah, then we can gain more fat. And when we gain more fat, what do we have? We have more of that aromatase enzyme. And what does that aromatase enzyme do? Convert testosterone into estrogen. Oh my gosh, then we're back to square one again. And it's a vicious cycle. So how the heck do we disrupt this? Because it is a vicious cycle. Well, one of the only ways that you can disrupt it is to plummet your insulin levels for a little bit. You have to be able to give your body a break. So, so much in the way of all the carbohydrates we are consuming, we are becoming insulin resistant, which is triggering this process to start in the first place. 
So I'm not saying that carbs are responsible for us all being fat. They were definitely responsible for me being overweight. I was 300 pounds before and I am not gonna lie to you, carbohydrates were a huge part of it for me, but that doesn't mean that carbohydrates are automatically demonized and automatically the enemy, not at all, okay? I don't look at the world like that. But I will say that our overconsumption of them and our overdependency on them, but more importantly, never taking a break between our meals and having chronically high levels of insulin. Okay, I've talked about video in videos where just taking a couple meals out of the day and dropping your carbs, but more importantly, having a very clear and defined break between your meals. If you eat and snack throughout the day, your insulin levels are constantly elevated, which means that you constantly are exposing your cells to insulin and they're going to become insulin resistant. And when they constantly are exposed to insulin and becoming insulin resistant, then guess what? then you start storing fat because you never have an opportunity to activate glucagon-like peptide one or glucagon in general, okay, which is going to allow you to release fat. My point with all of this is estrogen has a huge impact on how much fat we gain, and estrogen therefore has an impact on how much carbohydrate we can store into the muscle where we actually want it. We need a pattern interrupt. So a three-step process for you in order of ease, okay? First step, Try taking one meal out of the day where you cut carbs out, period, okay? Just do that. Step two, a little bit more advanced. Very clear lines between your meals. Breakfast, lunch, dinner with zero snacking, zero calories coming in in between. What this does is allows your insulin levels to drop for a little bit and glucagon levels to come up, allows you to restore some of that insulin sensitivity. The third level, which is a little bit more complicated or at least more advanced, is doing intermittent fasting two to three days per week. 16 hours, fast, eight hours of eating, okay? Where that way you're giving yourself a very clear break and allowing your body to restore that insulin sensitivity so we can break this estrogen pattern, allow your testosterone levels to come back up and potentially allow your body to get back in that natural pattern. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.